Hey guys, welcome back, welcome back, John Megacycle here for Command & Conquer Red Alert 3. I got in a few requests for this one, and I'm more than happy to tear this one open. A uh, bit of backstory, the Red Alert series is different than the traditional Command & Conquer series. It's a different storyline, it's a different game entirely, tons of fun, different mechanics, units, the whole nine yards. So, if you ever talk with someone and they say they play Command & Conquer, they could mean Command & Conquer, Command & Conquer Red Alert, there's a lot in there that really makes this a completely different game. I even remember way back when, when I played the original Command & Conquer, and when Westwood Studios was working with Red Alert, and they were really trying to decide whether or not Red Alert was going to be an add-on to the Command & Conquer game, or if it was going to be a completely different game, they chose completely different game, and Red Alert was born. If you're not familiar with how the storyline of this one goes, I'll give you the really quick few seconds here. Einstein, Albert Einstein, famous scientist, created a time machine called the Chronosphere, or the Chronoshift. Keep forgetting. Either way, he created a time machine, went back in time, and killed Hitler before Hitler was going to come to power, which would have started the makings of World War II. With Hitler out of the picture, Russia came to power instead of Germany. So what we really have is we've got a completely different dynamic when it comes to who's a good guy, who's a bad guy. It's not so cut and dry like that. What we've really got is a completely different dynamic. I present to you Red Alert. Now this is Red Alert 3. Each Red Alert game has been kind of spun into its own universe, so to speak. So Red Alert 1 storyline is a little different than Red Alert 2, which is different than Red Alert 3. In this reincarnation of the game, we've got three factions, three sides, nations, however you want to say it. We've got the Allied Nations, we've got the Soviets, and we've got the Empire of the Rising Sun. Now each of these have their own strength. For the Allied Forces, we have mostly Air Force. For the Soviet Nation, we have mostly land units. And for the Empire of the Rising Sun, we have a concentration of Navy. So depending on how you like to play, you can definitely start there, but each faction has their own abilities, their own units for each of the types. It's not its not like the allies don't have a navy. It's just kind of what they specialize in when they come to command abilities and as such. So that having been said, I've already chosen a map here. This one's Infinity Isle, I believe. Yeah, Infinity Isle. This is a real nice even map. $10,000 initial resources. Um, I think that's really about it. I can give you more of the intro as we start playing, but we're going to go for it. As the Allies, we are going to emphasize Heavy Air Force Building. and MCV as usual. Uh, the Allies have a normal build pattern. When they construct a building, they click on it in the command panel. It deducts an amount of resources from your account. Complete. You place New it, end of story. Options. Okay, Normal building. Red Alert standings. Um, the Soviets and the Empire of the Rising Sun construct their buildings differently on top of all their other differences, which kind of gives that a neat little throw in there. So not everyone plays the same. Kind of like if you've played StarCraft II or StarCraft, the Terran, the Protoss, and the Zerg build their structures differently. Complete. It's very similar to that. Options. So, resources are put into these piles here. These are ore mines. They have ore. Ore with an O. Don't mishear me. <laughs> Um, we're going to build these refineries. We just put them right outside and they just, harvesters go back and forth. They're not called harvesters here, they're called prospectors for the allies. Not that big of a difference, not that big of a deal. But there's no like raw resources sitting around. Why do they always send me the rookies? Okay. I'll make this quick. Up against the Soviet, this should be interesting. We're going to go ahead and start selecting our command abilities. In here, they're called top secret protocols. I call them command abilities because I'm used to playing generals. Um, there are certain tiers, you get to select certain abilities. We're going to go with Advanced Aeronautics. It increases the durability, ammo capacity, authorized. everything of our airplanes. And that's definitely how we're going to play this one. I'm going to construct some Vindicators. Vindicators are fighter bombers, uh, good against ground forces. Uh, I shouldn't say fighters, I guess they're really bombers because they can't shoot the air. Um, we're going to go ahead and get another air base going on. We're going to get a bunch of stuff going on just to get an emphasis on Air Force. Don't worry about it. Uh, the enemy will usually build these bear units, or dogs, or drones, depending on what side they are, uh, just to get some knowledge of what's going on. So, we have some Vindicators, we're going to go out and do some searching. Really, we want to do a lot of hit-run stuff with these guys. We're going to be attacking often, frequently, 
Sir, at a rapid pace. I don't know what other adjectives I can use. Now each unit in Red Alert 3 also has an ability of its own. This little icon right here, this one's return to base for the Vindicator. It allows it to come home or back to the airfield significantly faster. So here's what we've got. We've got two squadrons of Vindicators. I usually break up my guys in twos. And this gives us good control for when we start going and attacking. We're going to emphasize power plants, barracks, a lot of light structures to really start slowing these guys down. Also making sure that we want to even up the stakes when it comes to land control, considering we don't have any base defense. We're just building one multi-gunner turret. Uh, the multi-gunner turret is the level, of, the low level defensive structure. It comes with a little rocket assembly on top of it, but you can actually put an infantry in it to make it better or different depending on how you want to function that out. So we're just going to chuck that there. Keep sweeping. This is what we're going to do. They have oil derrick, that's fine. Oh, we lost one. Shoot. That's okay, we're still building plenty of them. Not that that's consolation. We need to be really smart when we're using such expensive vehicles like these to do attacks like we're doing. So for every dollar they're spending on vehicles, we're getting a good pullback on our units. Again, back. Very cool. They're losing a lot of money every time we do these strikes, which is perfect. Cool. Now that we've got a good air force going on here, if the enemy decides to do heavy anti-air at this point, we have to quickly diversify what we're doing. That could be very problematic very quickly. What we are going to do is we're going to start working on diversifying our economy before we work on our attack strategy. Or at least changing or building units and such. Enemy base detected. Another pass through. Let's go ahead and wipe out this Derek. Enemy units detected. Enemy engineer detected. I'm all yours. Don't worry about a thing. Consider it gone. Vindicator ready for a run. Saving a lot of cash doing that. Prospector. Now, we built a prospector, and actually you can build prospectors out of your Hello, ore refinery. Sir. This guy can set up a little base that extends the control yes, of which sorry. you can build units around, to, word. through, that sort of a thing. That mechanic was really introduced in Command & Conquer 3 for the build way. radius. And now. that's really what we're doing here. So, let's go ahead and get another power mm -hmm. plant set up. The then we're going to get a refinery good to go, and then we'll be able to deploy Let's that out quickly. Now, we have not built a Enemy barracks, we have not built a war factory, Enemy we have not detected. done a whole lot of other building. Wipe about that air force, or the anti-air, I should say. Now, the cool thing about Red Alert 3 is you can build structures anywhere you want. And what do I mean by that? I mean specifically, right on the ocean. Here's our prospector that turned it now into a command hub. Once he's done deploying, we'll be able to build in this area as well. And we're going to get a minigunner turret out here as well, provide a little protection. I must agree. Come on, come on, come on. Thank you. No NGs. Good command control is what we're going to need here to really keep this up. Oh, they got mix. MiGs are the fighters of the Russian army, or Soviet army, I should say. We're going to have to be careful with throwing a lot of resources. Oh, shit. Sometimes what will happen is, actually what will happen all the time, is if your planes don't drop all their bombs, they'll just hover over wherever they are. They won't return to base automatically. So it's really important to stay on your feet to make sure you know exactly what's going on with your army. Yes, my friend. You're in good hands, my friend. Now, that makes me a little weary about using all these guys, so we're going to have to be a little careful until we get some fighters online. We're going to go ahead and counter that MiG with the Apollo Fighter. Excellent, agile aircraft, quick to hit, quick to run, works out great. I'm ready. Kick the tires and light the fire. Get something out of your way. I'm all yours. 
Okay, let's. I messed up my command group, so hold on. There, there, there. Give me another one. Thank you. Great. We're gonna make sure that gets tapped out. Instead of building on barracks and trying to control stuff ourselves, I don't mind just coming in here and ruining what they've got. Now that MIG should be showing up in just a second here. Go back home. Yep, there he is. There they are, I should say. Okay, a little sloppy on my part, that's fine. Been a little bit since I played. But again, now that I'm confident their mix are gone, time to go at them. Now let's see here. Ooh, surveillance sweep. That's handy. You pick two points on the map, and it'll send a group of... There. A squadron of spy planes to check it out. It's a great way to get a lot of sight. Now, I don't see any anti-air, but I did see a helicopter. So we're going to follow through with our Apollo fighters and make sure we get that knocked out. Building. Apollo here. Give me the word. Come on back, guys. Are you ready to play? Every aircraft has a certain amount of ammo, so we way. need to make sure that we keep bringing our guys back, make sure they keep getting repaired. Perfect. Apollos go back. Vindicators come up. Start hitting them where it hurts. Electricity. Command. Now I'm going to find that airport and I'm going to screw that up because I'm getting tired of rebuying these Vindicators. Okay, hang on. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Something's messed up here. That should be taken. That should be open. Okay, cool. Got that figured out. I'm ready. Guys are all ours. Yes, my Let's get that word. tapped out of existence. In the shoot. Enemy sure base detected. Here we go. Up to speed. In the shoot. Okay. AI is starting to get a little bit adaptive sure here, day. starting to build the flak cannons, hours. which are the anti-air structures for the Soviets. Course. So excellent work on up their part. Guys are all out. unit is under attack. RTB sounds good to me. Show the ground. Perfect. No losses on our part. That's excellent. Are you ready to One, play? two, three, four, five. Okay. Now we're sitting on a ton of cash, and if you know me at all, that's bad. We need to make sure that we keep up spending. Um, right now we should build a war factory, and we should really start chunking out a bunch of units, making sure that we've got a standing army available. Construction complete. Which we are going to do immediately. Select location. Enemy units detected. That goes away, that goes away. That goes away. There should be enough of everything. Perfect. Now, if anyone's not very skilled at playing against an Air Force General, I keep saying General like we're playing Command and Conquer Generals. We're not. Sorry. Um, we can just keep hammering them over and over and over and over again, making sure that we just keep them off of their feet. Now, another thing about the tech trees. When it comes to tech trees, it's not always just building structures. The allies have to go through heightened clearance. It's like a structure you pay for. It's really an ability. The command center, or the construction yard, or the command hub can be upgraded in this heightened intelligence, and it unlocks more structures, more units, that sort of a thing. Now that we're clearance level two, our structures can build different stuff. So if you saw me click before, we couldn't even build a tank before. Now we can. Gonna get a nice diverse set of units out. Yes, That's working on higher clearance. Now you may have noticed, maybe not, I did also purchase a proton collider. That's actually gonna be awesome. That's the Allied su uh, Super Weapon. There they are. We're gonna lose one, but they'll lose all theirs. Yep. Oh, there he is. It is time, isn't it? Excellent. We got the cash. We need to spend it. Oh, let's see here. Surgical strike. Multi gunner at your service. Yeah, or it's a cryo shot, which is a freeze thing. 
high tech, which gives everyone's abilities better refresh rate. Let's go for surgical strike. Surgical strike um, it's about exactly what you think. There's a bomber that just sweeps in, a high speed bomber that sweeps in and drops a bomb. So, what we could do is surveillance sweep. Just if we want to mess with them a little bit. Now, what the thing is, when I drop this, it'll be a signal flare, so the enemy will know where I'm doing it. Damn. Not nearly as impressive as you'd think. But for free, I'm not gonna cry. Give me the word. Sure is ready for a run. Okay, we've got some pretty good control here, and we're building a nice army. Enemy base detected. Yes, my friend. Give me the word. I'm really waiting to see where those MIGs are coming from. But until I do, I certainly don't mind wrecking up this guy's base. Acknowledged. I'm sure he's got a refinery we'll back go. here. Absolutely, he does. Sure as day. There's the mix. Watching the minimap can be just as go. important important as watching the main battle grid. Considering, Let's see what they got. I also now know where their Show the ground. airport is. Cool. A little micromanagement. Make sure that we save everybody. If we weren't paying attention and we just said attack anyone willy nilly. The damage would be spread completely throughout what we were attacking. But if you specify and say, attack this unit, concentrate all your fire, you make sure that you're getting the most bang for your buck. My pleasure. Now let's see, now that we're highest clearance, let's get some Mirage tanks. Oh, they're awesome in this game. They're like Prism tanks with Mirage tanks with better armor. It's awesome. Yes, my friend. Go, 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 go. That goes away. That goes away. Little micro, send back home. Cool. That way we're not going through the whole base. I'm so sorry. Go, 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 go. Their anti air tanks or bullfrogs are aquatic, so they could just fly over anything. Or, I mean, float, <laughs> really. Okay, good. Good. Haven't had to do a lot of defense because we've been mostly offensive. Let's see, I want more Mirage tanks, and that's what we got going on. Now, before the technology in Red Alert 2, it was called Prism. Uh, Prism uses some type, some sort of light refracting, reflecting nonsense. It, it basically shoots a high-powered beam of light to damage a unit or structure. In this game, it's called Spectrum. So the defensive structures aren't prism towers, they're spectrum towers. So that's how the technology is different. They give it a different name and a different feel and some different attributes. That's kind of what gives it a different a different look. Use a few of our actual land units here. The apocalypse tank, which everyone's happy about. Everyone's familiar with. Let that shake out nicely. Let's assist a little bit, our comrades down below. Come on back. Now, if anyone's ever played Red Alert games before, you're familiar with the Soviet super weapon, the Iron, Iron Curtain. Ion Cannon is what I was going to say. The Iron Curtain. Um, it renders units invulnerable for a set amount of time. It's absolutely devastating if used correctly. Oh, they built a Tesla coil up here? Really? It's freaking gone now. I was like, what the heck is zapping my dudes? No, I'll wait. Tap two mana? Oh, the crap. You got him? Thanks, buddy. Why don't you go on home? You deserve a little iron armor. Okay, we have all our Vindicators. One, two, three, four. You guys are somewhere else. Awesome. We're just going to leave you guys right here. I must agree. I'm ready. Want to make sure we keep these Apollos close. I'm all yours. Let's do our sweep. We're going to hit economy. Actually. Oh, that was awkward. I thought the rest of his team was there. Ooh, here we go. Proton Collider. Engulf, target area, in a boiling bath of energy, chain reacts targets, and ground zero. It's awesome on a stick. It's great against not well defended structures. Oh, hang on. Okay, that was probably an expensive waste, but. 
Ready as always. Oop. Of course. Go, 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 go. I see that. That's called the satellite drop. The Soviets decommission we'll a satellite and drop it right on Earth on a specific location. It gets a little damaging, a lot of damaging, once it's later revisions. So, anyway, back to what I was trying to say. Proton Collider is great against lightly armored structures. Uh, let's do... Warning. A vacuum imploder has been detected. Okay, vacuum imploder is the second ability, or the second super weapon of the Soviets. We have the Chronosphere. Perfect. That can go away. That can go away. That can go away. Now the MCV can redeploy, as we're used to, but the cool thing is the AI actually tries to be self-preserving. So now that we've attacked the MCV enough, I mean, it's kind of cool. It can be really dangerous. Now the MCV, oh yeah, can also float. Now the MCV is going somewhere else. Um, that's cool if the base is under heavy attack. The base will actually attempt to preserve itself. But when it's in situations where it's not necessary, maybe like now, now it's undefended. Now I can just screw it up. In the clear. In the shoot. Yes, my friend. I'm gonna guess it's gonna go right here. I would be right. We're gonna bomb the crap out of it. You're down one MCV, my friend. I do. How did you know? Let's have a look around. Yeah, let's have a look around. Did I not select it? I heard unit lost. I don't. Oh. What's on the agenda? Yep. This is a chemical spill ability. They have a bomber that comes in and drops in toxic chemicals. Gets very dangerous, very deadly, very quickly, especially if you're not paying attention, like I am not with my land force. Come on back home, guys. Okay, first of all... That goes away. Let's hit that up. The cryo shot will make structures more susceptible to damage. It puts them in a frozen stasis, and then what happens is anything will just shatter the structure. It kind of ignores armor. So we're going to build an add-on there. Let's have a look around. Now you might have heard ore mine soon to be depleted message. These mines will run out of money, but you'll still pull a very minimal amount every single time. So this one's empty, I'm sure. Oh, nearing depletion. Okay, that's right. That's the message. Let's put up our chrono shift. Building. I'm all yours. My pleasure. And we're just gonna keep hammering this base. This guy's got nothing left. Surgical strike is absolutely awesome for structures because they can't move. Enemy units detected. Yeah, hardly. Just say the word. Bravissimo. Building. Now, whenever it comes to adding structures or adding mini bases, this is a quick time for a tutorial. Whenever I personally build an add-on base like this, I like to add the power for that base in that area. So if they wipe this out, I don't have 30 power plants here, I have two. That's enough to power this base. Over here, as I'm adding on, I'm going to add a refinery. So I'm going to add a power plant, maybe a defensive structure, and the, you know, like I said, the refinery. But I've got enough power here to keep this base running. An has been what I really mean by that is don't don't put the 30 power plants here, or even in your main base. If they walk your main base and shut everything else down, you put yourself at a horrific disadvantage. If someone comes in here and smashes this stuff up, my net loss isn't any worse than what I was using. I'm just going to lose what was powering this area anyway. So that's how I kind of do it. I know everyone Select has different location. solutions and different ways to go about it. Blast ready. Enemy units detected. How are they rebuild? Oh, you know what? Indicator ready no, I have no idea how they're rebuilding. Unit is under oh, another attack. MCV. Just say the word. Unit lost. Enjoy the show, my friend. I'm ready. Vindicator Oops, ready for wrong the guys. Time. Taking a beating up here. A bottle here. Yes, my friend. They must have produced one out of... Oh! You know what? That naval yard, I'm sure, can produce MCVs. 
building. So same deal I'm here. Yours. Surgical strike ready. Building. I didn't even get to talk about bombers. Enemy the units the Allies have an even cooler airship Wait called. Um, I've oh Millennium bomber, Sentry bomber. Okay. On you can way. actually put infantry I'm in it. Now. You can paradrop if you want. Those things are those things are pretty cool. So you can paradrop a bunch of infantry and bomb raid at the same well, I don't think at the same time would be smart. But close to. Building. Okay, very good. Home. Refinery. Another really cool thing about this game is the AI is broken into personalities. If you're used to playing Command & Conquer 3, then you know that the AI has, like, battle types. There's a balanced rusher, gorilla, that kind of a thing. It really dictates how the AI plays and operates throughout the battle. In this case, we're up against Olav. Olav is a Soviet, obviously, playing against a Soviet player. Um, he mostly favors ground units, so what he was building was mostly the stuff that we would see a Soviet player build on the ground. Duh. The Apocalypse tanks, that's customary. Come on back. Now the cool thing with the Chronosphere... Well, I must have gotten it because it's freaking gone now. Um, you can do one way teleportation. Um, you can kill infantry instantly, but you can not only take your units from one part of the battlefield and move them to another, or you can move an enemy's right into the drink, like I just did. On hold. Canceled. All is well. okay, so we got that going on. I'm kind of doing this a little, a little rough. I'm under the assumption you guys have played at least or have heard Red Alert before. So I could do a bit more of a tutorial-ish, but yeah, we're just going kind of quick here. Yes, my friend. Is it time? Give me the word. There he is. Select target. Proton Collider. Perfect. And now we can just use all these guys to clean up. They got nothing else. Affirmative, sir. All is well. We just need a few more bombs here. We're going to finish off the power plant. The rest should be gravy. Enemy units detected. Guys are looking good. Now, not only for the American player do you have someone who is pro Air Force, uh, I believe that's his name is Giles. Um, but what you'll also see is. Oh, I keep forgetting that thing has such a huge destructive impact. Um, you'll not only find a guy that's pro Air Force, but you'll find. Other players, there's two other personalities that are a good mix. So even depending on your playstyle, you can specify, I want three or four players pro Air Force, that's all I want. You can play that way. Okay, time for sentry bombers. Nope. Yeah, that's all they've got left. Yes, you can. They've been asking for this. Right up. I thought the Spectre tank we should be or the Mirage. No. A unit is under Just attack. Ready as always. I guess not. Give me the word. Just give us the target. Just give us the service. Cool. Just give us the order. So the Sentry bomber has what? Two, has four, defeated. six, a some number of bombs, and then they also have a couple of infantry slots. You can Multi fill that up with infantry, so you can really clear. move a good amount of force pretty darn so quick if you use it right. Give us a target, we're on our way. Indicator, ready for a ride. Give, give us a target, we're on our way. Much heavier armored, Got but slower. It's kind of a problem, especially if you're going up against the agile MIG. Let's do this. Enemy units Better Cryoblast. Cryo oh, Cryogeddon. That sounds awesome. You can tell if the structure is affected because it'll... Oh, there we go. Like, literally any damage will screw that up. Perfect. Hey, like that smirk on your face. What? You've never lost before? Nope. Oh wait, I mean yeah. Shut up. <laughs> Sounds good. So I hope this gave you guys a bit of a taste of Red Alert 3. 
it's a little faster paced, I think, than Command and Conquer 3, but it all depends. Um, Command and Conquer 3 does have a bit, a bit higher of an economy. Um, you can also greatly expand based on how many refineries and stuff you have. This one's a bit more modular. You can only have one refinery per ore pile, so that kind of limits where you're at. It kind of adds also a fair pace to it. So went through units, structures. Of course, we had the most. Um, these are the super weapon icons. It's when I believe you construct a super weapon. I believe so. And then of course victory and defeat, resources. They had the most of us throughout maybe 90% of the game, but it's how we used our dollars. I knew that Oleg was a heavy ground unit, so building a heavy air force was a smart counter. Then of course the summary, all the tasty stats. Where's our kill death? There we go. 2.8 to <laughs> .22. Special abilities used. Support powers used. Okay, that's, that's actually kind of cool. I don't think I've ever noticed that. So, anyway, thanks for watching, guys. This has been a walkthrough with the Allied Power of Red Alert 3. I'll be releasing a Soviet and an Empire of the Rising Sun eventually. So, thanks for watching, and I will catch you next time.